we spent a lot of time this year looking at linear relations and linear graphs. Um, this whole unit is going to be on nonlinear equations and nonlinear graphs. Um, so if we think back to linear graphs, anything that we graph that looks like a straight line is called linear, um, and anything that we graph that doesn't look like a straight line is, is nonlinear. We're going to be spending most of our time looking at um, quadratic equations, starting today with being able to recognize quadratic equations when we see them, um, writing equations in standard form, and then being able to solve them using something called the null factor law. Um, but just a quick definition, our quadratic equations can be written in this, this form, which we call standard form. It's where we've got an x squared term, an x term, and some constant, and we're, we've got that equal to zero. Um, so your a, b, and c there are just any constant, any number, um, but something that is important to take note of is that a can't be zero. If you've got a equal to zero, that means that whole first term disappears. This one here will be gone um, and you'll just be left with this here, which is linear. It's no longer quadratic. So it's important that that term, that first term is there. Uh, some examples of quadratics and non-quadratic equations given in this table here. You don't have to write this all down, but it's important to notice that with our quadratic equations on the left here, you've got an x squared term, an x term, and some constant. Um, further down, we can see that this one here has an x squared term and a constant, but no x term. That's okay, as long as the x squared term is there. Um, this one we'll come back to. Uh, in the first example, it looks like it doesn't have an x squared term, but we just need to expand it out. If we look at our non-quadratic equations over to the right, we can see that the first one here that we've got is linear, and there's no x squared term. The ones below it all have something a little bit funny about them. The second one has a square root of x, which we don't want. We only want powers of uh, 2 and 1. This one here has an x to the power of 3. There's a cube term there, which we also don't want. And that bottom one here is divided by x. We also don't want to be dividing by any x's. Um, so we've got lots of non-quadratic equations on the right. Um, we need to, to be careful that we're not trying to work with any of them. Okay, so we've got a couple of examples here that we want to do. We want to put these um, quadratic equations into standard form. And if we recall, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c, so our powers of x in descending order, starting with x squared, ending in c, and just equal to zero on the right-hand side. Um, if we look at our first one here, a is pretty good already. Um, our only real problem is that we've got an equal to nine on the right-hand side. We don't want that. Um, so to, to get rid of that nine, all we need to do is subtract a nine. We know our inverse operation is subtract, um, and we end up with negative 3x squared plus 7x minus 9 is equal to 0. And that's standard form for the first one. If we look at our second one, we have one extra step that we need to do. This is, we've got a bit of a bracket thing going on here, and we don't want to, we don't want that in standard form, basically. Um, so we need to expand out those brackets. Um, so think back to early in the year, we did lots of expanding. All we want to do is grab out x, multiply it into our brackets. x times 2x is 2x squared. We need to also do that for the second term and just be really careful with that sign there. x times negative 6 is negative 6x and that is equal to 1. One more step, same as last time. We don't want an equal to 1, so we want to subtract a 1 from both sides and we end up with 2x squared take away 6x take away 1 is equal to 0. Let's talk about solving quadratic equations. We have this law called the null factor law that we're going to be using to help us solve quadratic equations. And you're going to be using this law all the way through year 10, year 11, year 12. It's actually really simple. It looks kind of scary, but it just tells us that if we've got two numbers, A and B, right? We've got two numbers and we know that when you multiply them together, you get zero. So A times B is equal to zero. What do we know about those numbers? We know that one of them has to be zero, right? If they multiply together to get zero, think of any two numbers that multiply to give you zero, one of them has to be zero. Either A is zero or B is zero. 
or potentially they're both zero. That's it. That's all the null factor law tells us. Okay, we're going to be using that to solve equations. So here are our steps. Um, we're going to first factorize the equation. We're actually not doing that today at all. That'll be next lesson and lesson after. Um, we're going to equate each factor to zero um, using our null factor law. We are going to solve each individual equation. Um, they're going to be really straightforward linear equations for us to solve. We're going to state our solution. And then a really good thing to do at the end is to check, right? Check our solution, substitute it back in, make sure that it works. So let's have a look at an example. We've got our steps to the right here. Um, and we've just got our equation x into x minus 4 is equal to 0. Yeah, so we're just going to follow our null factor law to solve um, this equation. So step one, factorize the equation. We said we're not going to do that because it's already been factorized. Right? We've already got some brackets there. Step two says equate each factor to 0. Now our two factors that we have here are x and x minus 4. Okay, so we're going to say what, I mean, what our equation is effectively telling us is that x times x minus 4 is equal to 0. We know that that means that either x is equal to 0 or x minus 4 is equal to 0. Right? There are only two possibilities if they multiply to give us 0. Um, step 3 says to solve each equation. Our 1 on the left here, x equals 0, is already solved. Um, so that one's done. The 1 on the right x minus 4 is equal to 0. To solve that, we just need to add 4 to both sides, and we get x is equal to 4. State our solution. Therefore, x is equal to 0, or it's equal to 4. We've actually got two solutions for this quadratic equation, unlike our linear equations, which always give us one solution. Okay, so let's do our last step. And remember, you don't have to do this step, but it's a good idea um, to just make sure you've done it correctly. Okay, so just with this space on the right hand side, I'm just going to do a quick check um, and sub both of those values back into the equation. So I'm going to start with the x equals 0. Sub x equals 0 into your equation. Left hand side is 0 times 0 minus 4, which is 0 times negative 4, which is 0, which is what we want. It's our right hand side. So that one's good. That solution works. Just because one solution works doesn't mean your second one is going to work though. So we need to check our second solution as well. Left hand side is 4 into 4 minus 4. That's 4 times 4 taken by 4, 0, which is 0, which is our right hand side. And that's also a good solution. Yep, so we know that we've done it correctly. Let's look at one more equation. This one's a little bit bigger, but that's okay. We've still got step one done. It's already been factorized. So we're going to go ahead and go to step two, equate each factor to zero. Here are our factors, p plus five and two p minus one. They've been multiplied together to get zero. So we know that either p plus five is equal to zero or two p minus one is equal to zero. Yep, that's our step two. Um, so step three says solve each equation. The left one is pretty easy. We need to subtract five from both sides um, to solve for p. And the one on the right, again, go through your inverse operations. I'm going to add one to both sides um, to get 2p is equal to 1. And then divide both sides by 2. We'll write this one um, to get p is equal to a half. So there are two solutions. Therefore, p is equal to negative 5 or a half. Let's do a check because it's quite easy to make mistakes when you've got fractions and stuff involved. Let's check again. Check the first one. Sub p is equal to negative 5. Our left-hand side is equal to negative 5 plus 5 times 2 times negative 5. It's just getting fancy. Um, so our first bracket here is 0. We almost don't need to do the second bracket because we know it's definitely going to multiply to give you 0, but 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Subtract 1. 0 times negative 11 is 0, which is our right-hand side. So that's good. Yep. Okay, let's go through and get rid of this and do a check for... Um, our second solution. 
So for p is equal to a half, um, we have again the left hand side is equal to a half plus five, and two times a half, subtract one. A first bracket, a half plus five is five and a half, which is 11 over two. And we're multiplying that by two times a half is one. Take away one is zero. And again, we get zero at the end. So both of those solutions work. Negative uh, five and a half are both good solutions.